hello and welcome back and today we are looking once again at the TVS 675 and in today's video we are looking at the virtualization station application for this NAS. When the TVS 675 was first announced one of the things that first struck me about it was that CPU which once again I'm not going to try and pronounce I absolutely ruined it in the review and if you do want to look at a man who has barely understood a single language other than his own and being the pinnacle of ignorance then do check out the review while I try to hammer fist my way through pronouncing that CPU but I know better now I'm not even going to try but with regard to the uh, NAS itself, that CPU is a relative unknown up against the likes of Intel and AMD processors that are all 64-bit and x86. This processor which has embedded graphics, which is an 8-core 2.5 gigahertz processor there has got a lot going for it and if we look at the system status there we can see that that processor with its 8 gig of memory have got a lot to shout about so in today's video i'm looking at trying to figure out what this cpu can do this is the third video in my series so far and in my other videos where i've looked at file management and backups as well as looking at plex media server i'm now looking at virtualization station i want to see how suitable this NAS is for running VMs. So I've installed a Windows 11 virtual machine on this NAS. Alongside that, I've also loaded two more clones of that same Windows 11 VM. And what we're going to do is run all three VMs simultaneously. We're utilizing OBS here for the screen recording on my local laptop. So I will highlight that there may be the odd graphical inconsistency. And we're connecting to all three VMs via a 1 gigabit Ethernet network via a controlled 1 GBE switch. So we've got them all there. So while I talk a little bit about Virtualization Station, let's go ahead and boot up all three of our VMs. Let's get them all running from within the NAS. They're all gonna have their own individual output there. And again, they'll all open up in their own separate tab there in Virtualization Station, and they're all gonna load Windows VM. This NAS has, um, I believe, four hard drives inside in a RAID 5 environment. They are Seagate drives, 14 TBs, and all of those are hosting this VM. So again, we're not running an SSD environment, which is something we're gonna to have to factor in later on when we look at all three of these VMs in use. The system is starting to freak out because each of these VMs has been given two gig of memory, and I'm utilizing a good chunk of memory already for the system running in the background. So again, if you are gonna run a test like this, do remember that the amount of memory that you utilize per VM when you run the VMs will be utilized by Virtualization Station. And as you can see here, if we go through there, Virtualization Station is utilizing now 5.5 gigabytes, but it's already gonna go up as these boot, uh, these VMs boot there in the background. But on the overview process monitor, you can see the utilization of that memory is quite substantial. So maybe upgrade if you're gonna run VMs in this manner. Now, as it runs all of this there in the background, that sad little robot down there, let's optimize and see if we can kill some smaller background processes while it does this. I want to take a moment and talk a little bit about Virtualization Station. It's still by far, or at least as far as I'm concerned, one of the very best virtual machine tools for NAS. Not only because it runs the VM stuff quite well, I'm going to cover the little robot because he's making me sad, um, not only because it can host a multitude of VMs, whether you want to migrate existing images that you have locally or over the network, or you can import and convert a VM decays or VMKs quite easily and ISOs, you can also directly download Windows um, uh, copies of Windows directly onto your um, virtual machine manager, this hypervisor software, and boot them with none of the mucking around getting ISOs and stuff like that. It just downloads the image directly for you for running on the system. And again, that's one click download. Indeed, you can even go into the VM marketplace where there's more compact VMs and blobs um, virtual environments that you can work within in case you're going to be migrating from those platforms and you want to test their viability. Same thing goes if you want to run QNAP's own software there as well. In the App Center, you've also got Linux Station for that matter too. If you go into the business tools, there are lots of different um, virtual machine tools available to you with QTS Essentials, 
listing tons of them from the Linux Ubuntu installation tool there all the way through to Container Station that allows you to install more compact virtual apps without um, an operating system underneath them. Very useful stuff there indeed and that's why I always think QNAP's virtual machine tools are some of the best out there. But going back into the VM manager here where we've got our three VMs and each of the VMs has been given two cores of the eight core processor and two gig of uh, the memory inside the NAS. Why don't we make our way into these VMs? And our VMs are now open. This is the VM window as well. It should be highlighted. From here, you can control how the VM is portrayed. The picture quality, if you're accessing via the browser, you can lower the resolution and therefore increase, uh, not the resolution, uh, the frequency of the picture to increase latency and access. But you've also got lots of other options there that you can utilize as well as adding USB devices and more. Indeed, if you are utilizing a Windows environment and want to tap directly in to a uh, VM it's always recommended to use remote desktop connection and tap straight in with the location or the IP directly into that software to boot directly into it in a window we can see that two of our VMs have booted so let's go into them here let's see if I can remember the password first time log into that second one why not third one is still on its way let's log in Oh, there we go. The password is incorrect. Why not? Windows 11, let me use the password. Password in lowercase. How bad is that? Cool. While it does that, we'll let that choose there. We'll refresh that page and get all three of our VMs on screen. Now that the VMs have booted, the next thing we want to do is make sure the resolution is a lot more filling of what we've got here on screen rather than those rather micro versions there. So we'll keep those changes and we're going to repeat those changes across each of the VMs there. So again, we scroll on down a little bit, go to the resolution there, bump it up to 1080 and then boom, we've got a nice full screen high res VMs running here. And again, we've just got that last one to go again because we're running three VMs in these different windows and Chrome keeps pausing them in the background, that does mean that we get a little bit of uh, catch-up problems there. And again, if you're worried about the response time of a VM, if you're running multiple VMs at once, you can always lower the quality. So if we lower this one down to 64, that'll give you some idea about the difference between these two VMs that we have. Let's move that one closer and again get this one running up there as we kind of compare and contrast across all three of these VMs running side by side in the one browser. Generally, I would never recommend utilizing numerous VMs in one web browser. One quick look, I imagine, at my task manager will show that Chrome will be absolutely rinsing my memory with Chrome currently utilizing six and a half gigabytes of memory. So do bear that in mind when running a VM there on a web browser because it will absolutely cane your memory. And I have 16 gig of memory in this machine. That is not good. Um, so we've got those all up there on screen. Again, if you lower the resolution, things are a great deal more responsive. But again, they're not going to look great. And again, remote desktop is a good way to look at that. Again, we have already done tests of Windows 11 on a QNAP NAS machine and just how easy it is to install on there. But again, to give you some idea about the difference there in quality, and maybe perhaps we can utilize that dial on the side to have a look at some of the other display quality. So if we go for medium there, stick that in the middle. I think mid medium there, if you look between medium and high, I think that gives you some idea about a decent difference between them. And you can actually get away with that lower latency quite well flicking between medium and high, whereas obviously low looks absolutely potato ridden in its overall display. Now, Having all of these running on here, we can do lots of little features and functions while it is running. You can obviously like go ahead and like restart the VM um, manually from within the VM or external to the VM. But you can also take snapshots of the VMs, which is always going to be useful where you might want to go back to this. So if we go for the 11 test, we can then go ahead and create that restoration point for our VM, which is always going to be handy if you're running experiments, which a lot of people use VMs for. And again, going along, if you try to press Control Alt Delete on a VM via the web browser, you're only going to activate Control Alt Delete on your own local machine. So always take advantage of those keys on the side to make it easier. And again, 
adding USB devices if we choose as we can see here I've connected a mobile phone and if we choose to we can now uh, a localized USB device that is connected to the NAS can now be turned into something connected to the VM so now the VM is going to have access to this device unfortunately it's already lining it up to be connected to this VM from within the virtual machine manager as it downloads the drivers there in the background and remember the connectivity of a VM for the most part can only be done when the VM is powered down although there are lots of different options of adding CD-ROM drives adding additional storage adding USB devices as you can see there there's lots of different things you can do with a VM on the NAS as you play with it and again as we go in there and go into all the different tools Again, flicking between the windows it does not like me doing that there does it um, and we can go ahead go into the different file settings let's go into that main menu bring it up for me please and we'll go from there into some of the options such as the file explorer and as you can see the phone is now starting to be connected to the device so we can go ahead and just say what we want it to do whether we want it to access files on the device or more and again we might just increase that pitch quality there so we can actually see what we're doing but again that now we are assigning USB devices on the NAS to the VMs and you can do that with pretty much anything from games controllers if you want to run a virtual games console or an arcade using RetroArch um, and all of those different tools there and of course you've got access to all of the updates that you would have in a normal version of Windows but in this virtual form and multiple VMs all running from one single NAS server. But this has been my test of virtual machines on the QNAP TVS 675 and also a little bit of a review of the current state of virtualization station three. There's lots of stuff you can do and I think with more memory, these VMs would be even better. Just remember, remote connection or patching directly in with VNC into a virtual machine to not have to worry about the refreshes that I've had to do in today's video. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. Take advantage of the free advice and support section over on NAS Compares. It's linked to in the description, genuinely free. We don't do anything with your emails. We just answer your queries. Me and Eddie the Web Guy, two humans, we answer every email. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.